Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the place, and the mountains in reply, echo back the joyous train. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyful strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? Gloria in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem and see Him whose birth the angels sing Come adore on bended knee Christ the Lord, the newborn King Gloria in excelsis Deo See him in a manger laid, whom the choirs of angels praise. May we, Joseph, lend your aid, while our hearts in love we raise. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Excelsis Deo, Gloria in Excelsis Deo, Gloria in Excelsis Deo.
Christmas, brothers and sisters. As I hold my precious granddaughter in my arms, it reminds me of Mary and Joseph holding baby Jesus in their arms. They were surrounded by problems, dirt, smell, noises, but in the midst of all the pressure, their focus was on the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. 
for many of us, this has been a tough year. Some of us have lost loved ones. A few of us have had people fall very sick. Many have lost jobs. And it's against this backdrop that I would like to take us to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Which talks about the need for us to put our trust and hope in the Lord. As we get ready to worship our Creator, let us remember the birth, death and resurrection of our Lord. Please join me for a prayer. Dear God, in the midst of a lot of trial, I pray that as we gather for worship, that our hearts will be on your word, the power of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill our hearts with a spirit of trust as well as with hope, because as long as we have hope, Lord, we have something to cling on to. And I pray that that something would be you and the power of your Holy Spirit working in our lives. I pray all this in your son's precious name. Amen. Merry Christmas.
unto wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Christmas. You know, the birth of a baby is always exciting. And God, in His wisdom, gives parents nine long months to prepare for the arrival of a young baby. How much preparation did Joseph and Mary have to give birth to the Savior of the world? None of us got a chance to choose our own parents. We were put in our families because God chose to do so. I know some of you kids complain about the parents you have. But as parents, if we, for whatever reason, were to pass away, who will we allow to raise our kids? What qualification will you look for in those parents? We'll obviously choose the best people to raise them. God Look through all of mankind to raise his one and only son, and he chose Joseph and Mary. Let's look at a few of these amazing qualities that we find in the parents of Jesus. The first thing we see is Mary's attitude. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered 
what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. We see that Mary and Joseph were engaged to be married. Back then, an engagement wasn't merely an exchange of rings, but was called betrothal, which was legally binding for a year and could be ended only by death or divorce. Angel Gabriel comes and announces to her as that she is highly favored. Mary's response, she's greatly Trouble. That is a common response when angels appear to people. Verse 30. The angel says, don't be afraid and reiterates, you have found favor with God. Second time. Verse 31. You'll be with a child and his name is Jesus. Parents can talk about their kids all day about their kids. They talk about their academics, they talk about their sports, they talk about dancing, he's so serving, he's a great artist, he's so funny, the list is endless. But here we see in verse 32 and 33, the angel is listing out Jesus' qualities before he's even conceived. He will be great, he'll be the son of the Most High, God will give him the throne, he'll reign forever as his kingdom will never end. Verse 34, Mary says, how? I'm a virgin. Good question. Angel says, it's through the Holy Spirit. Mary was probably anywhere between the age of 16 to 19 years old. And Nazareth was a small town of less than 2,000 people. Verse 35 says, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. That's the Old Testament for Holy of Holies, the very presence of God is going to come on you. It's different from Elizabeth, her relative, who also had a child at her old age. And very different from Sarah in the book of Genesis, as the Bible says, God opened up her womb. Mary was favored over all other women. And her response, an exemplary one, I am the Lord's servant. May your words be fulfilled. What an amazing response. No complaining, no arguing, no questioning. Even Sarah, in the book of Genesis, when she was told she's going to have a child, she laughs. Mary's response was honorable. And the angel left. A few things that people believe about Mary, and they're probably, not probably, definitely untrue. One is the veneration of Mary. And that is a lot of people believe that we can actually pray to her or worship her. And I'd like to recall a small incident that happens in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 27, where a person comes to Jesus and says, blessed be the mother who gave birth to you. And Jesus' quick response to that is, blessed rather are those who listen to the word of God and follow it. The other untrue statement about Mary is a concept called immaculate conception. It's a Roman Catholic dogma asserting that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was preserved free from the effects of the sin of Adam, usually referred to as original sin, from the first instant of her conception. And the third one is called perpetual virgin, that she was a virgin when Jesus was conceived and continued to stay a virgin. But we do know that Mary did have 
other children through Joseph. We just saw Mary's attitude. Now we look at Joseph's attitude. In Matthew 1, verse 18 to 25, the Bible reads, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill that what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. You know, Mary and Joseph were pledged to be married. When Joseph a righteous man hears about her pregnancy and thinks she has been with another man, he wants to divorce her quietly. But the angel appears and clarifies that it's not what you think. It's through the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, she will give birth to a son, not your son. She will give birth to a son. There is no contribution from Joseph towards the child's DNA. Verse 23, the angel is quoting Isaiah 7, verse 14. It is Emmanuel, God with us. Joseph just obeyed. No union he had with Mary till she gave birth to Jesus. Joseph was probably in the range, age range of 18 to 30 years old. And by the time Jesus starts the ministry, Joseph has already passed away. Let's look at some truths of Joseph through these verses. He was a righteous man. He called sin as sin. He thought there was unfaithfulness. Hence, he wanted a divorce. He was mature. He wanted to divorce her quietly. No fuss, no yelling at Mary's parents, none of that. He was obedient and submissive and surrendered to the angel. He didn't care about people and the gossip. He stood for Mary and he allowed himself to go along with God's plan. He let go of the privilege to name his son. It's the father's sole right to name his son. He was willing to let go of that privilege when he heard the angel saying, his name has already been established. He shall be called Jesus. And he went along with that. So we saw Mary's attitude, we saw Joseph's attitude, and the last thing we're going to see this morning is Jesus' attitude. You know, the story of Christmas didn't begin with the birth of Jesus. It would be completely inaccurate to say that a helpless baby grew to become the savior of the world. It would be better to say that the savior chose to become a helpless baby. Jesus wasn't created. When we look at John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was with God from the beginning. That's how the book of Genesis starts. The creation was done by God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit working in perfect harmony, in perfect unity, representing the triune God. In John chapter 8, 56 and 58, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and yet you have seen Abraham? 
Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus says, Abraham was happy to see my day. And the Jews make fun of Jesus saying, you're not even 50. What are you talking about? How have you seen Abraham? And Jesus' response is, before Abraham was born, I am. Now you can understand, these are divine words being uttered by Jesus. He could have said, before Abraham was, I was there. Or before Abraham was, I was. But he chooses his words carefully by saying, I am. And the Jews' response after this, they picked up stones to stone him. They understood. Because he was associating himself with God and the Jews did not appreciate it. The last book of the Bible, Revelations 22, verse 13. Again, Jesus' words, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. These are the words of God penned down by John, the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. Jesus wasn't created. So if he wasn't created, who is he? Jesus is the creator. Let's continue reading in John 1, 3 to 5. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Through Jesus, everything was created. Without him, Nothing was created. Clearly, the Bible states he's the creator. In him, if we follow him, we all can experience life to the full or abundant life as we call it. He also represents light. And when he comes into our life, he brings light into a dark, dark world, a world without any hope. Paul records in Colossians 1, 15 to 17. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him, all things are. Hold together. Look at those words stressed by Paul here. He was the firstborn over all creation. For the Jews, firstborn manages estates. He inherits everything. By him, all things were created. Heaven and earth, visible, invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, authorities. Created through him, for him. All things held together. The sun is in its place because of him. The planets are held in a perfect place because of him. The atmosphere is breathable for us because of him. Our lives, everything is held together by Jesus. And we got to be careful even about making fun of each other. Because when we laugh at somebody, we are laughing at Jesus' creation. The third thing we see is Jesus joined creation. John 1, 9 to 14. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all, who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. The giver of true light came into the world. He descended into his own creation. The world didn't recognize him, didn't receive him, spat upon him. I want to recall an incident where once 
one of the disciples who had become a member of our church and the parents did not appreciate it. And the parents got uh, got that person arrested and made us come and visit that person in the police station. I remember going to the police station. And in the police station, there's a lot of uh, back on forth discussion, but that person stood strong and said, I want to follow Jesus. I don't care what my parents say and all of that. And right towards the end, the parents of this person came close to me and spat on my face and cursed me. And I still remember that incident. Now, I received a lot of terrible mails in my life. I've received text messages which are not so good, calls that have been disturbing, personal uh, talks that people have had, but I still remember that incident where I was spat upon. It was probably one of the most humiliating incidents that took place in my life. And Jesus went through that just for you and me, for no fault of his own. Yet to all who did receive him, he gives us the right to be children of God. What a blessing it is, brothers and sisters, for all of us to be blessed like that. We become children, not through human effort, but through God's effort. We become brothers and sisters in Christ. Whether you're Kannadiga, Telugu, Manipuri, Assamis, Malu or Talu, we're all one because of what Jesus has done for us. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. The real word, residence. But the real meaning, tabernacle. God had joined his creation. Jesus became human. Fully divine and fully human. To help you to understand, I'll give an example of the temple of God. Where there are two sections to the temple of God. One is called the holy place where humans are allowed to come. And then there was a separation in the form of a curtain. And then there was another place called the most holy place or the holy of holies. Where the priest was allowed to enter once a year only. And these two sections were separated by the curtain. So if you look at it from man's side, this curtain can be seen from this side. If you look at it from the other side, from God's side, the curtain can still be seen. And that is what Jesus represents. From man's side, he's fully man. From God's side, he's fully God. And that's why when Jesus dies on the cross, the curtain gets ripped into two because he gave us humans access to God by him paying the price for our sins. You know, Jesus is the only one who could probably, properly condescend. What is condescend? It is doing something which is below your dignity. And all of us have boasted about this. I'm from, I'm from this school. I'm from this family. And I have done this. I've done that. But think about what Jesus did. It is God becoming a baby. Swimming in the amniotic fluid in a human womb. That is condescension. Ultimate condescension. God dying on a cross for no fault of his condescension and God trusting an eternal message with mortal men like you and me. Jesus went through infinite limits to become a man. What limits us today to do more for Jesus? What limits can we push this December and in 2021, maybe your quiet time, maybe your Bible study, maybe your giving nature, maybe you want to be more encouraging, maybe you want to push yourself to get up earlier this winter. It's enough bad news. It's time to share the good news of Jesus to all. Let's not take Christ out of Christmas. Let's have the Christmas attitude as we celebrate today with our friends and family so that we can appreciate the blessings that have come into our life because of what Jesus has done. Amen. Thank you, Mark, for the great lesson. What I learned about Joseph is when he heard the truth about Mary, he completely surrendered. He didn't wallow in his doubts. He stood beside Mary against all the odds. And also, Jesus 
is the hero of Christmas. He is the creator, supreme power, controls the universe. No one can fathom or understand his glory. But he came down to us with much humility to redeem us from sin and to give us life to the full. So, let's not forget to share the life Jesus shared with us to our family, friends and our neighbors. Here are some announcements. Next Sunday, we will be having regular virtual service. And on Jan 3rd, that is the first Sunday of the next year, we'll have a combined service in three languages, English, Kannada and Tamil. And also, as the new year is coming, the church has put a new quiet time series on the life of minor prophets, which will begin in January. What a great way to start the new year by reflecting the lives of all the minor prophets. You will receive this quiet time series in a PDF format. If you uh, have any questions, please ask the zone leaders in your region. This is for the singles. January 1st to 3rd, they are having singles retreat. The theme is New Beginning which will be held at a retreat center near KGF. Contact Christopher Noyle for further details. On Jan 4th onwards, every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., there will be young Christian classes for eight weeks. All those who got baptized in 2019 and 2020 should participate in these classes. I encourage all the family group leaders to announce this in your family groups and encourage the young Christians to attend this meeting. Zoom links will be posted in the FGL's family WhatsApp group. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for loving us so much that you would leave your realms of majestic glory to come dwelling among us. If it had not been for your great love that compelled you to come and redeem us, today we would still be lost in sin. Because you loved us so much, you were willing to come to this earth and offer us salvation. Lord, we ask you to grant us peace, peace in our homes, peace in our churches, peace in our hearts, especially when it feels like the whole world around us spins out of control. Help us stay focused on you this Christmas time and always. Thank you for loving the whole world enough to send the greatest gift, your son, so we might truly have a peaceful life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. We are not yet done. We still have a final thing to do. We are going to play a song and if you are sitting in front of the TV, or if you are in front of the mo uh, mobile, or in your laptop, I would request you to stand up. As the song is being played, dance along with your family members and with your loved ones. Thank you. See you next week. Please help me down.